Hello and welcome back to Miniverse, where today we are traveling back in time to World War II. That's right, we're making a World War II tank diorama. So to kick this diorama off, I found a cool 1 to 100 scale King Tiger tank and went to town on building it. When I opened the instructions, I was in awe, confusion, regret. But in the end, it was actually a lot easier than the instructions looked. Since this was my first tank, it was a bit confusing, but after gluing the hole together and getting rid of most of the mold lines, I started to get the hang of it. And this Tamiya glue worked a treat much better than the previous glues I've used. Not sponsored. Next was a mind-numbing tank turret that really put my short fingers to the test. <laughs> Putting this tank turret together took a lot longer than I thought, um, but you live and learn and we'll get them next time. Now, after priming the tank, it was time to get painting. Now I know I wanted to finish with a light grey tank, but I had no idea how to get there. So I started experimenting with three grey paints, dark, a mid, and a light tone. One of the reasons why I chose to do a tank diorama this month was because I've been watching a lot of YouTube and I've come across an amazing channel called Night Shift. He's someone who paints a lot of tanks and makes amazing dioramas so I'd highly recommend checking out his channel as he inspired a lot of this build today. Once the base and mid-tones were done, I stippled on some light grey to give the tank some texture and some highlights. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that sub button because we're getting close to the 500 mark and it's looking pretty saucy. Now it's time to paint these tracks and panels black alongside the shovel and some wood brown. And next it was time to paint all the metallics, like the little loops and the shovel. And after that, it was time to paint all the nicely coiled pieces of rope. Now, let's get on to the diorama. One of the most important aspects of making a diorama is to make sure it's not flat and to add some height and slopes. So I followed the standard routine and shaped some XPS foam with a hot wire, using the tank for some scale to help me along the way. Sculpting the diorama out the way, it's time to seal and texturize that bad boy. One of the things I thought would look cool would be if there were some tank tracks running through the diorama. So I got some miniput and pressed the tank into it to make these cool little tracks. The track's now done, it was time to add little tidbits to the diorama. So I put some twigs and plaster rocks to make some ambiance to the scene. With the diorama now base coated, I've added a layer of PVA glue for the winter flock to be added. In the end, this step was completely meaningless, but don't worry, just wait and see. With the flock now dry, it's time to paint all the rocks and trees.
So to make the snow, I mixed some matte Mod Podge, some snow flock, and covered it in the entire diorama. Before it dried, I sprinkled some more snow on top to make it nice and crispy. After a good shake, it's time to add the tank to the diorama and get it all snowy looking. Now let's get some leaves for this tree. So the leftovers from the previous video, I glued them onto the trunk and put some more snow flock on top. So that's it for this World War II winter diorama. I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what you'd love to see in the future. Now until next time, I've been Miniverse and I'll catch you next time.